federally funded projects must consider social, economic, and environmental justice impacts, both adverse and beneficial, that may result from a project. These impacts are guided by federal regulations including, but not limited to, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, which requires no one be denied federal benefits, services, or contracts on the basis of race, color, national origin, sex, age, disability, limited English proficiency, or low income status, and that requires measures to ensure meaningful access to benefits, services, and information for individuals with limited English proficiency. Executive Order 12898, Federal Actions to Address Environmental Justice in Minority Populations and Low Income Populations, the Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970 as amended, known as the URA, Executive Order 13166 on Improving Access to Services for Persons with Limited English Proficiency, and the Americans with Disabilities Act. The socioeconomic section of the RES addresses potential impacts from federally funded transportation projects to minority, low income, and linguistically isolated populations. These are defined by the U.S. Census Bureau as households where members aged 14 years and older speak a non-English language and that also have difficulty with the English language. Additionally, consideration should be given to individuals with disabilities, educational resources, employment opportunities, and Indian tribal governments. Specifically, Disproportionately high and adverse impacts to environmental justice populations must be avoided, minimized, or mitigated to satisfy regulations associated with the use of federal funds. As part of the RES process, the district must assess any impacts to environmental justice, or EJ, populations, complete public involvement, follow federal regulations, and describe any known issues in the RES. The district should review potential impacts to environmental justice populations associated with its project and provide a brief description of any potential impacts in the RES. The EPA's EJ Screen Tool, U.S. Census Bureau American Community Survey data, and the U.S. Census Bureau Quick Facts data can be used by the environmental specialist to help identify any minority, low income, or linguistically isolated populations near the project. When completing public involvement, the district must indicate any public involvement that has been conducted or is anticipated to be completed that will notify the public about the project. Public involvement appropriate for the project must be completed and documented, including to responses to written comments where warranted. The district should determine if there is any public controversy about the project. For most projects that qualify for a Programmatic Categorical Exclusion, or a PCE NEPA classification, public involvement may include, but is not limited to, press releases, advertisements on city-county websites, social media posts, and or public meetings. Any right-of-way or easement acquisition should follow the Uniform Relocation Act and should not have a disproportionately high impact on environmental justice populations. The district should identify environmental resources and anticipated impacts under the Known Concerns section of the RES. Throughout project decision making and until construction, MODON environmental staff help to ensure that consequences to the social fabric of an area are given consideration with other environmental impacts. The specialist plays an important role on the project development team to ensure community values are supported. The Request for Environmental Services provides the Design Division staff the necessary information to obtain approvals and clearances from the Federal Highway Administration and the resource agencies, ensuring project compliance with state and federal regulations, thus preventing project delays or stoppages. The District will submit an RES at each project development milestone. These project milestones include the location and conceptual stage, preliminary plans stage, right-of-way plans stage, and the final design plan stage. The district initiates this process by submitting an RES to the design division for every project. 
For projects that require an environmental assessment or an environmental impact statement, the design division and the district will determine when to begin this process since an RES is not submitted for those projects until later in the NEPA process. At the location and conceptual plan stage, design division environmental staff use various tools and databases to screen the project, but may also contact district staff to determine whether they have any concerns with the project or additional information that may help in the project review. For all projects, the environmental specialist, district project team, and or consultant team will ensure that any comments concerning potential impacts to the community solicited from local entities through the public involvement process are addressed. The impact assessment process described previously must be initiated prior to alternatives development and is to be used to guide that development. This activity fulfills the NEPA requirements relating to the selection of alternatives and the information obtained is used in the EA, EIS, PCE, or Documented Categorical Exclusion Documentation. When adverse community impacts are identified, the environmental specialist will propose potential methods for addressing them through mitigation. This step of the community impact assessment process involves problem solving and generating solutions. There are four primary methods to address impacts, which are considered in the following order. One, avoidance. Alter the project so an impact does not occur. Two, minimization. Modify the project to reduce the severity of an impact. Three, mitigation. Undertake an action to alleviate or offset an impact or to replace an appropriated resource. Four, enhancement. Add a desirable or attractive feature to the project to make it fit more harmoniously into the community. It is not intended to replace lost resources or alleviate impacts caused by the project. There are two types of enhancements. The first is environmental enhancements, which may be added to a transportation project to improve community acceptance. The second type are transportation enhancements, which are funded through a provision of Safe, Accountable, Flexible, Efficient Transportation Equity Act, a Legacy for Users, or Safety Lou, with funds set aside from the Surface Transportation Program. Environmental enhancements are incorporated into a project as part of routine decision-making to make it more compatible with and sensitive to community needs. Transportation enhancement activities offer communities the opportunity to expand choices with safe bicycle and pedestrian facilities, scenic routes, beautification, and other investments that increase opportunities for recreation, accessibility, and safety for everyone beyond traditional highway programs. During the preliminary plan stage, the environmental specialist will repeat a similar process as was conducted during the project screening for the location and conceptual plan stage. The environmental specialist reviews the project for changes and determines whether any new information has become available since the last screening. Any new findings pertinent to the project will be relayed to the district in the RES response and the environmental specialist will discuss appropriate actions with the project manager. If it has been determined that the project could have an impact on a community, the environmental specialist will continue coordinating with the district to determine and design the necessary solutions. The district will continue to coordinate with the local entities. During the right-of-way plan stage, any new findings pertinent to the project will be relayed to the district in the RES response and the environmental specialist will discuss appropriate actions with the project manager. If no issues are identified, the district is notified that the community impact assessment issues are clear for this project. If it has been determined that the project could have an adverse impact on a community based on analysis and potential impacts to that community, solutions should begin to be identified or should be underway. The environmental specialist helps the project manager identify impacts and solutions. If the NEPA class has been determined and approval been given, the review may need to be re-evaluated. During the final design plan stage, at final design stage, if there have been no community issues identified to date, 
the process from the earlier stages is repeated. The district submits an RES to the design division and the environmental specialist screens the project for changes and determines whether any new information has become available since the last screening. Any new findings pertinent to the project are relayed to the district in the RES response and the environmental specialist will discuss appropriate actions with the project manager. If no issues are identified, the district is notified that the community impact assessment issues are clear for this project. Solutions to community impacts that are part of the project design should be finalized at this point along with commitment from the project manager. Any commitments shall be documented in the RES and carried forward by the project manager into bid, letting, and award. EJ Screen is a free public mapping and screening application created by the Environmental Protection Agency. This tool contains demographic data that will help identify minority, low-income, and linguistically isolated populations in a given location. LPAs should use this tool to identify any sensitive populations in or around the project area. To access EJ Screen, use the link in the bottom left of this slide and click the text link under Launch the EJ Screen tool on the main page. If you need additional guidance on how to properly use this tool, please follow the second link on this slide. To explore data and determine if there are any sensitive populations located near a project, use EJ Screen to locate the project area and then use the Maps tab in the menu on the left-hand side of the screen as shown in the slide. Under Socioeconomic Indicators, the LPA can obtain data related to income, language, and minority populations in the vicinity of a project. This slide shows a visual representation of EJ Screen data. The district should use this tool to determine if any sensitive populations may be affected by a project. To access additional data, visit the U.S. Census Bureau Quick Facts website and the U.S. Census Bureau American Community Survey website. If a project may affect the minority or low-income populations, Further action may be required to ensure that the affected populations are given adequate consideration and ample opportunity to participate in project development. Contact MoDOT environmental staff for further guidance if you think your project may affect sensitive populations. When evaluating socioeconomic impacts, the district should also consider impacts to sensitive populations resulting from road and bridge closures, closure of public transit facilities, detours, and residential or commercial displacements. The district must also consider sensitive populations when determining the best method to provide sufficient public notice of travel disruptions. These impacts can disproportionately affect minority and low-income populations. For example, language barriers can affect public notices. Also, impacts to important resources such as grocery stores, hospitals, and businesses can cause excessive hardship on minority and low-income populations. Public involvement is required for all projects and must be completed prior to NEPA clearance for all RESs. Acceptable public involvement includes a press release, social media posts, website posts, or discussion at a city or county meeting. The district should provide a brief summary of any public involvement that has occurred or will occur in the public hearing meeting information section of the RES form as shown in this graphic. The district is responsible for providing the public involvement information, road closure and detour information, number of displacements, and details on access restrictions to bus stops, pedestrian facilities, and commercial and residential dwellings. If the district is aware of any sensitive populations located around the project, it should describe this in the RES form. These pieces of information will allow MoDOT environmental staff to determine any potential issues or roadblocks associated with the project more quickly.